Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the do's and don'ts of prompting Copilot for Microsoft 365. This will allow you to get the most out of Copilot and avoid common pitfalls by learning what to do, but also what not to do when you're writing your prompts. Some people refer to this as prompt engineering. So let's jump in and take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a few do's as well as a few don'ts when it comes to prompting. So the first thing is be clear and specific. Provide specific instructions to Copilot, such as topic, purpose, tone, and required length. So, for example, if I wanted to write me a short blog article, I might say, please write me a 500 word blog article about SharePoint um, in the tone of voice of Ryan Reynolds. So here we've been very specific. We've asked it to write a blog. Um, we've asked it for a topic, so it's about SharePoint. Um, the purpose, um, well, we could have been a bit clearer of the purpose, maybe because it's for our website. Um, I've also asked it to provide in a tone of voice. Now, um, you could say, for example, use a friendly tone of voice, but I've actually gone with saying using the tone of voice of Ryan Reynolds, which is a very jokey, friendly person that's um, on social media a lot. So here you can say, hey there, let's dive into the world of SharePoint, shall we? Picture this, you're at work and you've got millions of things to do, your desk is a mess, your inbox is overflowing, and you can't seem to find that one important document you need to finish your project. End of SharePoint, the hero you didn't know you needed. So there you go. It started off and it's and it's done really well. It's right at the blog article. Um, we could further refine it if we wanted to by asking it further prompts. Um, but I think this is sort of shown how we can be very clear, very specific, and get great results. So what are what is going to be our first don't? Don't be vague. So when prompting Copilot, avoid using vague language um, and be clear as possible to receive better quality responses. So I always say it's always about telling it sometimes what you do want it to do, but sometimes tell it what you don't want it to do as well. So I had a recent example where I was using Copilot inside of Outlook and I wanted it to tell me when I next had an available 10 minutes um, for a meeting. And what it did is it listed out all of my meetings that I had for that day. And then it, it sort of said this meeting, this slot here is free. So actually going forward with those types of prompts, I say, tell me when I'm free, but also don't list out all of my meetings. So it knows what it can and it can't do. And this is really important for AI to have guide rails to know where it should be, uh, what it should be doing, but also what it shouldn't be doing at the same time. So the next do is keep it conversational. Give feedback to Copilot based on the quality of its responses to help the AI learn and match your preferences. So this is where we could say, actually, um, we, 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 want to, we, we want to go backwards and forwards. So sometimes what we've seen in the past before, when people start using um, the, the Copilot, they can just give it one prompt. And if it didn't come quite back right the first time, they either think oh this is this is not at all what I wanted um, but actually what they need to do is almost treat co-pilot like it's a colleague and sort of say oh no this isn't quite right could you change this for me could you rewrite it in this particular way so I'm going to go back to my prompt and you could see here um, it's got a few suggestions of how I could uh, uh, alter it so I might say could you add some uh, humor so this is then going to go away um, and start putting together a different response. Now you can see because it knows I've asked it to do it in the style of Ryan Reynolds, um, it's actually um, so it's a loop in um, Spring Review and SharePoint Deadpool style. So it knows that Ryan Reynolds is obviously Deadpool, um, and he's put in um, a, a couple of kind of uh, jokes in here. <laughs> so you can see here, go past one joke, say. Um, Here's a twist. SharePoint isn't just a one-trick pony. It's like the actor who can do drama, comedy, and action, all while looking good in spandex. <laughs> so you can see here, we've gone back. We've asked it to add a bit more humor, and Copilot has met that. Um, I've done that in a conversational way. Um, and again, you tend to go backwards and forwards with Copilot to get it exactly how you want it to be. So 
Another don't is request inappropriate or unethical content. Copilot is not responsible for the content or the consequences of your writing. You should respect local laws, rules, and the rights of others. Now, what you might find um, is if you try and do anything unethical or, or what it maybe thinks is plagiarism or um, any of those types of things or anything that could potentially be illegal um, to, to be sort of getting information on um, or researching, then you will find that Copilot could well block that content and it wouldn't surface it to you. Um, so another do, so give examples, use clear and specific keywords or phrases when asking Copilot to write a piece of text for you. This helps it generate more relevant and creative copy. So, um, so by giving it kind of more prompts, so I, I with my uh, blog article request, it was very short, just about SharePoint. But I might have given a few more details, such as um, please make sure you include a section about how important design and UI is inside of SharePoint. Maybe I could have said, please include a section about um, how we recommend that super users from each department get additional training, things like that. So giving it additional prompts about what should be included in that article will obviously help it. And it's not going to be um, as vague and rogue as, as potentially it would be if you left it very open ended about what you wanted to do. So another don't, don't use slang jargon or informal language. This may cause Copilot to give low quality, inappropriate or unprofessional responses. So if you're using kind of slang or jargon, it might not exactly pick up on what it is that you're talking about. Um, you do have to, although you want to keep it conversational um, with Copilot, there's also a level of kind of almost professionalism. So imagine if you were talking to a new colleague that you've never met before, you probably wouldn't be using slang or jargon or acronyms, which um, the, the business understands um, or your org or that your organization's using on a daily basis. But if you imagine actually um, you, you're talking to a brand new recruit that's only just joined today um, then avoid using those things and you'd probably get a better response from that colleague and treat copilot in exactly the same way so the next do is ask for feedback requesting feedback from copilot helps it to understand your needs and preferences um, and to provide you with more relevant responses so you could ask it um, you could ask it to give feedback both ways. So you could ask it to say, please ask me um, further questions. So something um, that you could do in this scenario that we're looking at with writing this blog article is you could, um, for example, say, I want you to ask me five questions about SharePoint. And then with those um, answers, please use them to write the blog article. Um, you could also ask Copilot to give feedback. So maybe you wrote the blog article um, and then you give it to Copilot and say, can you please provide feedback on this? What could be improved? Can you ask me some questions to sort of deepen your knowledge about um, this topic so that you can you can prompt me and give me more feedback on this blog article? I just wanted to pause there for a second to ask a quick favor. If you've not already subscribed to our channel, please do um, subscribe to our channel as we have loads of great content, webinars and short videos about Copilot, Dynamics 365, SharePoint, Power Apps. There's loads of fantastic materials on here. So go and check out our channel, subscribe, um, and obviously keep your eyes peeled for the, the, the videos that we're putting out on a very frequent basis. So what about another don't? So don't give conflicting instructions, prompting Copilot to pull on a task that includes multiple conflicting pieces of information in the same request can uh, confuse the AI and result in a lower quality response. So try and, I, I, the way I try and do this as well is to avoid having conflicting instructions, use the kind of, we, t we were talking about conversational style before, use it as a conversation, go backwards and forwards with simple kind of one line requests, get it to make alterations and, and keep going backwards and forwards like that. If you provide too many instructions all in one go, or maybe even conflicting instructions. So say, for example, um, if I went back to Copilot now with a request to say, um, please put at the beginning a section about SharePoint design. And underneath that, I've, I also requested, please put at the beginning a section about SharePoint security. That could be quite conflicting and it wouldn't know which section should actually come first and it would be down to the AI to almost flip a coin to think about which section it's going to put at the beginning. So you need to think from a perspective of 
um, AI of, of how it's going to understand that. But again, I keep reframing this. Think of Copilot like your colleague. If you gave that request to your colleague, they would be equally as confused if you said put two different sections right at the beginning. So keep in mind that, and, and obviously AI isn't perfect. It's not going to read your mind. It is going to go off based on the instructions you give it. So um, the next do is check for accuracy. Occasionally, Copilot may make mistakes. Always check Copilot's responses for accuracy, grammar, and style, and watch out for irrelevant or inappropriate content. So as we say, it's called Copilot for a reason. It's not autopilot. It's not going to do everything 100% for you. The idea of Copilot is to be like a, 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 a Copilot that's sat next to you. You are the pilot. You are the leader. You are the person ultimately that is responsible for the content that is that Copilot is creating. Copilot is just speeding up the process. So always check it. Don't just get it to create something, copy and paste it and, and use it for whatever you're using it for. You need to check it for accuracy, read through it, make sure the grammar is correct, make sure it's the style, the tone of voice that you wanted, make sure it's got all the, the information you requested is in there, and make sure as well that it hasn't potentially worded something in a way which it makes it sound incorrect or, or something like that. So always check um, for accuracy. Um, provide details. So provide Copilot with contextual detail to help it generate more accurate, consistent responses. For example, the genre, characters, and plot to a story. So I tend to find before, if, if I know I'm going to be using Copilot to get a lot of prompts um, and to be working with it um, uh, for, for, for quite a large task, I will give it the background first. I'll explain who I am, uh, my role, my objective, what I'm trying to do with this task before I even um, ask it to start doing things. So it understands. And in fact, actually, sometimes you can do uh, this in reverse where you can tell Copilot to take a persona of somebody. So um, let's say, for example, I do a lot of kind of marketing work and I use Copilot a lot for marketing. So I could go to Copilot and say, I would like you to take the persona of a chief marketing officer or marketing director, for example. And I want you to review this campaign or this blog article or this um, event agenda that I've put together. And I want you to come back and give me um, feedback based on this. So giving it the kind of the, the big picture of what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve is really, really um, important. And in fact, actually, I covered this in a recent webinar, um, which actually was the real world examples of Copilot webinar. Um, so if you've not seen that, go and check that out after this. It's on our YouTube channel, um, where I actually talked about um, using Copilot inside of Word to um, actually review a proposal um, from the eyes of a customer and then provide feedback. And then it provided really great feedback that would increase the chances of us winning that deal. The final um, thing is be polite. So using kind and respectful language when chatting with Copilot helps foster collaboration and improves AI's responsiveness and performance. And in fact, as I've seen a lot of people saying that they get better responses from Copilot when they're being polite and courteous and um, so sometimes I think it takes it a bit far when, when people are um, sort of saying sort of good morning and pleases and, and thank yous and things like that sometimes. Um, but it's up to you. Um, and so, some people would argue when AI comes to take over the world um, that they're going to be spared because they, they said please and thank you to, to Copilot. Um, but it, it, it's, it's best not to um, almost give short answers. It's best not to... Uh, be annoyed or angry with it again frame this as copilot is like your colleague would you talk to your colleague like that would you respond on teams to your colleague in that way and if if the answer is no then you probably shouldn't be responding to copilot in that way either i hope you enjoyed that video if you did then of course like the video drop any comments questions into the comments feed below uh, subscribe to our channel and also if you're looking for any help deploying copilot to your organization um, valto are a certified microsoft partner we can help you get ready for your everyday ai powered com um, companion um, that will transform your productivity and communication we'll work with you to develop your adoption strategy and prepare your environment for maximum impact so 
we will ensure that you're getting the best return on investment we can talk you through our fixed price adoption plans um, to make sure that it's deployed correctly everyone's got the right licenses um, and you're getting the best return on investment you can either email us at, on hello at valto.co.uk um, or there's a link inside of the description of this video which will take you to our website just fill out that contact form and you'll have a free co-pilot consultation with one of our specialists to talk about how we can help you today thank you